Hi there everyone and welcome to this video. Today we'll be talking about payment discounts within Business Central. So we'll just run through initially what is a, a payment discount. So they're also sometimes referred to as settlement discount and you basically offer your customers or take from your suppliers uh, a payment discount or settlement discount when you pay an invoice um, earlier or um, before the due date and it's usually within a time frame which you have agreed with your customer or your supplier. Um, so we're just going to run through the setup that we need to do within uh, Business Central to um, use the payment discount functionality. Uh, there's a few areas that we need to, to, to do some setup and config in, so just going to start walking through these. Uh, so the first page that we need to go to is the uh, payment terms page here. And uh, if I go into my payment terms, just going to use the one that we've got here set up in the out of the box environment. Um, so just focusing on this payment terms code here, it's 1M8D. Uh, and what we're saying here with the due date calculation being 1M is basically just that the invoices posted with this particular payment terms code are due within one month of the invoice date. So the 1M just means that invoices posted with this payment terms code are due within one month of the posting date. So we also have the discount date calculation, which is again the BC date formula field, and that says 8D, uh, which is basically eight days. And it's saying that if we pay that invoice um, within uh, eight days, then we can get a 2% discount here. Uh, then we also have a field to say calculate payment discount on credit memos. So if you want to use that for this particular payment terms code, just place a check in this box and it will be used for credit memos. Uh, and then we have a description here, one month, 2% eight days. And that is shown usually on invoice printouts just for, for reference there. So do bear in mind uh, the payment terms table within Business Central is shared between customers and vendors. So you can assign the same payment terms to your customers and vendors. It just looks at this table. Um, but just for the purposes of today, uh, we'll be running through this functionality on the customer ledger. So once you've set up your payment terms, what you need to do is just jump onto your customer record and I'm going into our customer 10,000 a datum corporation here and I'll just show you their payment terms code here is 1M8D. So that's the payment terms code that we just ran through and over here if I say select from full list that's just looking at the same table that we were just on. So once you've assigned your payment terms code to your customer, there's a few other areas that we need to set up. So if I just go to my general posting setup here, uh, what we need to add into here is the sales payment discount debit account and the sales payment discount credit account. So um, I've just set these two up for the purposes of this demo, but if I scroll to the right here, you'll notice we also have the purchase payment discount debit account and the purchase payment discount credit account as well. So I've not configured these, but you can set those up obviously to be different accounts on your general ledger as you wish. And if I just drill into the account that I've got selected here, it's usually an income statement account that you would define. I mean, this one's just from the demo chart of accounts, but you would usually make this type of posting to your income statement. So do bear in mind as well, guys, this is the general posting setup. And as a rule here, you don't have to set up those combinations of general business and product posting groups where you wouldn't use these types of transactions. So I've just put them in here for domestic EU and export, but you wouldn't need to do that for all of those records. If, for example, you knew that you shouldn't be posting those discounts um, to the um, 
those particular customers or vendors. So next area that we're going to go to continuing the configuration is a page called the general ledger setup. So on this particular page, um, we've got a Boolean here called adjust for payment discount. So if we're operating in the UK, that is the rule uh, that, that we would use. The rules changed. I think it was around 2014, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and we did used to use the payment discount, excluding VAT Boolean here. But since 2014, um, we switched um, because of uh, rule changes by the authorities to adjust for payment discounts. So uh, that's what we need marked as yes um, to use this functionality. And just whilst I'm on this page, if I scroll down, we do have under the application tab some payment discount tolerance warning fields here that we can do some configuration with and just general payment tolerances. So we can set up payment tolerances in conjunction with our payment discounts, but we will run over those in another video. So that'll be one that we do in the future. Um, so once we've set the adjust for payment discount boolean here, there's just one other bit of configuration that we need to consider. Um, so if I go into my VAT posting setup here, what we need to think about is the adjust for payment discount boolean here, and we need to mark that against all of the relevant VAT business posting groups and the VAT product posting groups. So here I've just marked this for domestic and reduced and domestic and ser services reduced here. Um, you can tick these against all of your VAT posting setup lines. I guess you wouldn't really need them where the business posting group is blank. And also bear in mind, you probably wouldn't need them where you have um, full VAT as the VAT type calculation and reverse charge um, VAT as well. So once all those bits of configuration are done, we can go ahead and post an invoice. So I'm just gonna go to my sales invoices and let me raise a new sales invoice. I'll just select our Adatum Corporation customer. And I just wanna show you here that the payment terms code of 1M8D come through to my sales invoice. So I can change them, you know, if I didn't wanna apply payment discount at invoice level, but we're just gonna leave that as is for now. Um, and I'm gonna add a line to my sales invoice for 10100, and we'll just set the unit price to be 100. Um, so just to recap here before posting, uh, we've got a, a sales invoice for a Datum Corporation, general ledger code 10100, quantity one, unit price 100, and the VAT on here is five. So it's a total of 105 um, GBP. So let me post this invoice. I'll say yes. And um, where it says uh, the invoice is posted as number 103226. Do you wanna open the invoice? I'm just gonna say yes. And I just want to show you here, if I go to find entries, the um, customer ledger entry associated with this record. So that's the entry that gets created on our customer ledger. And just wanna show you this here because we have our payment discount date, um, which is calculated based off the payment terms code that we have. So um, you see here the due date is one month after the invoice date. So we posted our invoice on the 1st of December. Therefore, the due date of my invoice is the 1st of Jan. But remember, if they post uh, the payment, if we post the payment for that invoice within eight days, so the 9th of the 12th, 2023, which is the payment discount date here, we can then get our payment discount. So we've got two £2.10 payment discount and the system has automatically calculated this as 2% of the value of my invoice. Um, so by all this setup configuration that we've got here, the system knows that if I process the payment on or before the 9th of December 2023, it will automatically apply our payment discount. Um, so just one more thing on here, if I go into edit list, 
I can modify the remaining payment discount possible here as well. And the original here is, uh, is uneditable. So what we'll go ahead and do now is we will post that invoice, uh, post the payment for that invoice, sorry. And um, there are obviously a few ways that we can do this, but just to keep it simple in this demo, I'm gonna post it using a cash receipt journal. So I'm just gonna set up my line here. I don't really need to change this to bank account, but I'm just changing the uh, balancing account to bank account. I've put in my customer. I said the document type is payment. And bear in mind here, we're saying the posting date is the 1st of December right now. So we are within the payment discount date, um, which was the 9th of December, remember. So um, let me go to apply entries. And I'm just gonna pick up my uh, invoice, uh, which is 103226. And if I say set applies to ID, notice there is a payment discount amount of the two pounds and 10 pence um, so as we saw on the customer ledger entry that is pulling through um, and the reason why that's pulling through is because my posting date of my payment was the 1st of December okay so if I change that to be after the 9th of December which remember was the the date that we had in mind to receive the payment discount um, so I've just changed that to the 10th of December if I now go into apply entries and do the same thing that we did before, invoice number 103226. If I say set applies to ID, this time you can see that there's no payment discount applied. So just to show you there guys that we do need to have the posting date set correctly and that needs to be before the date which we said we would pay, um, um, make the early payment to receive the discount. So I've just changed that back to the 2nd of December here. Let me go apply entries. And I'm gonna go ahead and just um, set applies to ID again on my, uh, on my invoice. And we can see the payment discount is pulled through again. Okay, so let me press okay on that. And I'm just gonna post my payment um, so I've just got a warning here which we can turn off in uh, the notifications I think so um, it says the posting date of one or more journal lines is after the working date do you want to continue I'll just say yes and now what we'll do is we'll just go back to our customer 10,000 and I'm going to go into their customer ledger entries and I've just got a few here. So what I'm gonna do is just organize by entry number. And we'll see here, we've got the last entry is a payment. So it's made on the 2nd of December. It's the payment that we just made. And you'll notice that the payment is for 102.90, um, but the amount is 105 there. Um, and if we want to see the detail underneath this, what I can do is go into my detailed ledger entries and we've got some identification of sort of what's happened here. So we've got the application, which was for 105, but then the initial entry there is 102.90 and then it breaks down. We've got three entries here for our um, payment discount. And you can see here, it's got a payment just extend this out we've got a payment discount which is the VAT adjustment here which is the 10p we've got the payment discount here which is the um, VAT excluded and then you've got the payment discount here in total and one of the other things I want to show you linked to this entry here is if I go find entries on my payment line we do also get a VAT entry generated as well so if I go into my VAT entry you can see here that we've got the base and the VAT amount there. Because we took the payment discount from our customer, the VAT ledger is updated accordingly. Um, and just one last thing on the find entries here, if I go into the GL entries, there are four of those. It's basically made those in the same way that we saw on the detailed ledger entry. So I've got the 10 pence going into my VAT control account, I've got 
my debtor control account, I've got my uh, bank account entry, and then I've got my sales discounts. Remember, as we set up on the general posting setup earlier, we specified account number 10300, and that's where the 2GBP has gone. Um, and just one other thing here um, before we close the video, um, I just want to show you that this payment that we've been focusing on here is applied to 103226. So if I go to applied entries, I can see that that invoice is applied to 103226. Um, so that's everything I wanted to show you in this video, guys. As I say, you can use payment discounts on the sales ledger and the purchase ledger. Equally, you can use payment discounts without the VAT setup that I just showed you. But if you're using it in the UK, certainly that is the configuration that you should be using. Um, so I encourage you to go away, have a play with that, set it up in a, a sandbox environment first, of course. If you have any questions, do reach out. Uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, we'll see you on the next one.